What we have lurking under the hood here is a fire breathing monster. Hey guys, welcome back to Epicenter Garage. Today is a very good day, but a bit of a stressful day. Well, the next couple days is gonna be very stressful because I'm trying to get my 1972 Datsun 1200 race car right here, ready for the Brian Redmond International Challenge race, vintage race at Road America. And I've gotta have this thing done and ready to go in two to three days. Now, that might not seem too bad, but this car hasn't seen a racetrack in nearly 10 years. And the last time it did, it came off the trailer, into the shop on a four post lift, and I haven't touched it since then. And there are so many things wrong with this car that we've got to hurry up and take care of. <sighs> and we're running out of time quick. So I purchased this, well, let me back up. I, along with a good buddy, purchased this car back, I think it was 2010. I started racing my 74 Porsche 911 RSR. He would come to the races with me. He caught the racing bug but didn't quite have a Porsche RSR racing budget. I barely did at the time. And so I said, you know what? Why don't I find you a good racing car that's gonna be number one, inexpensive to buy number two inexpensive to maintain and oh by the way you know what i'll you know he's not a not the mechanical type i said you know what i'll even maintain the car because that's what you do when you're trying to get your friends to like do something you're like you know what i'll help you out i'll maintain the car for you and so i'll even find you the car which is exactly what i did which i found this car on ebay late one night in 2010, I think we bought it for 55 or 53 or 5500 dollars. I do remember that it cost us nearly two thousand dollars to have it shipped from California to Kansas. He eventually he raced the car twice. I think I raced it the first time because I, I, I it needed some work. Even you know race cars always need work, no matter if somebody says they're in perfect running condition. So I fixed it up. He wasn't able to race it the first time, so I raced it the first time. He raced it the next two times, and I finally raced it the last time. So we've only run it on the track four times. The last time was, like I said, nearly 10 years ago. And at that point, after that race, I put it on the four post lift and didn't do any maintenance. I literally didn't even clean this car, which is a huge mistake. But his racing career got cut short by having three small children. And eventually those, you know, as you start to have family, those kids started growing up being in activity. So he was no longer able to come to the races and race this car. So therefore the car sat and I continued to race my 74 RSR as well as a, a couple of 510s that I have. But this car is an absolute blast to race in. I cannot wait to get it back on the track because I remember two things about this car very clearly. The first thing I remember about racing this car is how easy it is to drive. I mean, I'm talking like super, super easy to drive. Very hard to get this car out of shape. And one of those reasons is because what's under here? What we have lurking under the hood here is a fire breathing monster. An RB26 twin turbo, 510 horsepower, 615 pound feet of torque, absolute beast. No, no we don't. I apologize about that. That was pretty darn cruel. What we basically have here is an L12, which is a 1.2 liter inline four cylinder engine. Now this is a stock block. We haven't done much to this engine other than added a header. We have a ram air system here. So it's ramming air from the front of the engine or front of the front of the car into the stock carburetor. We have an aluminum radiator here. We have an oil cooler over here. We have a little bit better coil, a little hotter coil. And of course, then other things we've done is just to make the car more reliable. Or I should should say easier to work on. So we have our stainless steel braided lines with AN fittings. And then of course you have other things that are mandated by SVRA or any vintage racing association, everything from a from an oil catch bottle, things like that. So other than that, it's got a stock uh, alternator, stock water pump, which brings me to my second point about this car. And that is, this car is slow. And when I mean slow, just about, it, no, anything on the road today possibly even some scooters can outrun this car. It is dreadfully slow. So slow, in fact, that sounds like I'm starting in some bad jokes. So slow, in fact, at some racetracks where there are actually, you have to climb the hill, you will hear the RPMs 
drop. Yes, they, they will drop. And that's not fun. Now, although the straightaways sometimes are not much fun, where the fun actually starts in this car is when you're at the end of the straightaway. The handling on this car is absolutely awesome because man you get on the steering wheel and you can just feel that back in so what basically you guys have heard the term this is a momentum car you miata owners out there you know exactly what i'm talking about i own a miata so i totally get it and that's what this car is now you get it wrong you're going to be at the back of the pack and you're going to spend the entire race trying to catch back up because you just don't have the horsepower you have to drive extremely clean lines and if you screw up you're done. As far as exterior modifications, I did cut a little lip here out of ABS plastic. There's a little gurney lip. It's about two and a half inches tall, but it did make a difference. I've run this, I've taken it off at like a track like Road America on the front straightaway on the back straightaway. It'll hit about 111, 112 without it. With this gurney lip on it, it hit about 115, 116. So it does make a difference in four miles an hour on a long straightaway. It's huge. As for the front arrow I've added, some of you might actually recognize this part if you have a Datsun 510 or a modified 510. This is actually a BRE part that was used on a lot of the racing, Peter Brock racing 510s. And so I've modified this one in order to fit on the 1200 because they were never, at least to my knowledge, never used on the 1200. But I think it looks fantastic and it certainly helps. Now for the wheels and tires, I did not put these on, even though that was probably the best choice to begin with since these are 13 inch mini light wheels are probably the lightest wheel you could put on this car. As far as tires, I run Toyo Proxy Triple H because in group two, at least at Road America and several other tracks, you have to run a DOT race tire. One of the things sometimes you don't always think about is replacing your safety gear in your car which can be relatively expensive if you have multiple race cars it's sometimes it's hard to stay on top of that stuff for example these racing harnesses they timed out in 2015 so every so many years you have to replace your entire racing harness in the car not only that but your fire bottle in the back you actually have to get that recharged and sometimes the recharging is actually more less expensive excuse me to buy a new bottle which is still expensive than to recharge your old bottle but you've got to go through like for example your helmet your helmet it's only good for so long. They have date codes on them and they check that stuff at tech. I've been in several situations where I've taken multiple race cars in one race car. I totally forgot whether it's belts or, or my fire bottle and I've had to overnight whether it's a fire bottle and or race belts to the track and that, oof, that's very pricey. So what is the end result of letting this stinking thing sit on a four post lift for nearly 10 years and procrastinating getting this thing ready to go? Oh my gosh, it is, it's, it comes down to just cramming a lot of work in a short amount of time. The bad thing is I've only had a chance to work on this thing one or two hours at a time with work, but we're gonna get it done. We're gonna get this thing up, ready to go to be able to race here very soon. So everything's been ordered, a brake master, a clutch master, a clutch slave, new safety harness, new fire bottle, trans fluid, oil, coolant, plugs, plug wires, a, a new battery, uh, uh, a ton of stuff I'm already, I'm already forgetting, but a lot of that stuff has already arrived, so it's sitting over there ready to go. About half of it has not, so most of it should be coming in by tomorrow. I'm keeping my fingers crossed, otherwise I'm in real trouble, but time is a ticking. So once again, you guys, I know this is a short video, but thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it, but we're going to get this thing, so make sure you like and subscribe so you can watch next time we get this thing over on the lift and start cranking on this thing, because like I said, we are running short on time.